Last but certainly not least, tonight I want to recognize the four honorees for outstanding service to our community and nation. Dr. Dennis Aiken, decorated combat veteran. Al Edmondson, business owner and community activist the NetJets Association of Shared Aircrafts Pilots, represented by Union President and First Officer Pedro Garreau, Captain Paulette Gilbert, Captain Alan Bobo, Communication Assistant Kirsten Cowart, and Pilots for Kids Columbus Chapter Director Ty Orth, and Leanne Eagle, and Erica Clark Jones would celebrate one. Would you all come to the stage? A combat decorated veteran of seven separate campaigns in the Vietnam War, Dr. Dennis Egan, is one of the strongest champions for veterans in Central Ohio. Dr. Egan is an active member of the American Legion Ohio Post 0430 and the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Association of Ohio, where he advocates on behalf of Navy and Marine veterans exposed to dioxin, a toxin found in Agent Orange. East High School's own business and community activist, Al Edmondson, is the proud owner and operator of A Cut Above the Rest. That's the barbershop where you can get much, much more than a haircut. In fact, Al opens his shop for community meetings and health screenings. Al also organizes a local basketball league and holds a back-to-school rally every fall. His work was recognized by Congresswoman Lady, who requested an invitation to the White House for the unveiling of My Brother's Keeper initiative. Al brought many of the best practices from his visit to our community and inspires others to mentor and serve. Every year, the men and women pilots of the NetJets Association of Shared Aircraft Pilots take time out of their busy schedules to make the holidays a little brighter for children spending it in the hospital. Through the Pilots for Kids Initiative, NJS AP pilots collect toys and essentials and benefit numerous families in the area. They also serve as an inspiration to many aspiring pilots. Through the leadership of Leanne Eagle and Erica Clark Jones, Celebrate One is on the front line of the battle to combat infant mortality here in Central Ohio. Our community faces immense challenges as they are tireless servants working every day to help connect new or soon to be mothers with important resources so that more families can celebrate all of life's many, many milestones. Thank you, and let's give them all a, an applause. Dennis Aiken, Al Edmondson. Another round of applause. Dennis Aiken, Al Edmondson, representatives from the NetJets Association of Shared Pilots, Leon Eagle and Erica Clark Jones. And let's do that one more time. Let's give all of the honorees a big thank you for everything they've done. And you know why we do this? Because the work continues. Because there's so much more for us to do. But let me end like I started by saying thank you to the constituents of the 3rd Congressional District for allowing me not only to serve you, but to stand here tonight and say to you, I make a commitment to continue to do more because of you. Thank you and Godspeed. Thank you. And because we know that I can't do this alone, 
there's something for you to do. And as a good leader does, they give you a challenge. So tonight, I challenge you to do everything you can do to do more because the work continues. And with that, this part of the State of the District concludes. But we also now have our town hall, which will allow you to ask questions and for me and my team to address those questions. If you have a question for Congresswoman Bailey, please limit it to just one question. Please proceed to one of the two microphones located in the front of the auditorium and in the aisleways. You can get to those momentarily. State your name and where you are from before asking your question, please. Good evening. My name is Rochelle Martin. I'm the Executive Director of the National Alliance on Mental Illness of Franklin County. I challenge you, Congresswoman Bailey, to help us with Families in Mental Health Crisis Act, HR 2646. And we would love to have the opportunity to sit down with you and talk about this mental health bill. Please give us a chance. Let me first say thank you for the work you do. I had the fortunate opportunity early in my career to be the Executive Director of Mental Health Services. And I'm going to date myself. That's when they call them 169 boards. And I was also appointed by Ohio's Governor Celeste to serve on the mental health board. So let me say to you, I welcome the opportunity to discuss this bill with you. And she's a great advocate coming here tonight. And part of the reason she's saying this, there is a bill that's in Congress right now that she referenced. And I think it's a great bill, but like in all bills, there are things that are in there that we're working on. And I'm one of your strongest advocates. I'd like to sit down with you, but we want to make sure that we give everyone equal access and opportunity with their loved ones. So if there is a parent, and or if there is a, a child and they have an elder parent, I want to make sure that they are also included in the process of picking that facility for their loved one, whether it's a parent or a spouse. I don't want to exclude them from the process of their loved one. So, so we're working on it. So just give me a little chance, continue to come and see me, and to talk with my staff that's here tonight. But thank you, thank you for what you do. Okay, we're going to go over here. Fine, and thank you very much. FAU, friend of the African Union Columbus, Chairman Percy Daniel Jr. of Cincinnati, Ohio. We're going to speak at the UN on the 19th of this month to the Exercise Council and the General Assembly. We work with Queen Mother, Dr. Blakely. And we're also going to Washington, D.C. after we leave New York on the 22nd to meet with the financial advisor to President Obama. Quantitative easing, and I need your support from your office, or I need to talk to someone in your office. Uh, can you assign me someone in your office? I can answer that right now. Absolutely, yes. We actually have a financial counsel. He's a lawyer. He staffs me on the Financial Services Committee. I couldn't bring everyone from Washington tonight. But we will make note afterwards, would you give your information to Jennifer, who's also a lawyer and also our legislative director. But I want to know more about that. I want to know when you're in Washington and be as helpful as I can. Thank you very much. I have my chief here. Give her the microphone so she can um, tell you what she's trying to let you know. You, they can't hear. It's not working. And, and let me just say, John Conyers was here 
this past year for us in celebrating Rosa Parks Day. So I will also let John Conyers, if he doesn't know, know that you're there, Pastor. Okay, we're gonna go over here. My name is Michael. Uh, I'm an activist and I'm from Columbus, Ohio. And uh, I'm here to respond to a March 21st letter that uh, you wrote with uh, Steve Stiers and Pat Berry uh, that voiced opposition to a resolution called for the Ohio State University to divest its endowment from uh, three corporations complicit in human rights violations. Uh, the three corporations are Hewitt Packard. Caterpillar and the British security firm G4X. Now, I want to argue that this bipartisan effort to impede the divestment campaign and the growing boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement is not the result of a supposed desire for world peace, but the result of financial conflicts of interest of corporate America. Uh, the boycott, divestment, Movement. I want to talk about that because uh, Nelson Mandela, he said that we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. However, you won't stand in solidarity with the struggle of Mandela, the ANC, or the Palestinian people because one of your leading contributors is billionaire Lionel Leslie West. Between 2015 2016, he received $8,000 from his company, Limited Brands. We know that Wexner is a political conservative who endorsed Jeb Bush for president. Wexner also established the Wexner Foundation, which runs pro Israeli fellowship programs with the goal of, quote, strengthening Israel's public leadership. So, my question to you all is how can they uh, stand in solidarity? On, on G4S, between 2015 and 2016, you received $9,000 from J.P. Morgan and Chase. Uh, the Department of Justice uh, reached a $13 billion settlement against J.P. Morgan and Chase for misleading investors about toxic mortgages that targeted African American and Latino communities. Are you ready to answer the question? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer each one. I know we said one, but let him finish. No, 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 let him finish. And, and, and I'll take each one of them. I'm okay with it. So, like I was saying, you want me to answer the first three and then I'm with justice, right? They okay. reached a 13 billion dollar settlement for J.P. Morgan and Chase, disproportionately targeting African Americans and Latino communities. The fact alone should have compelled you to reject contributions from that bank, but it did. They also became a broker for G4S, J.P. Morgan and Chase, right? This is the third largest corporation in the world. They're responsible for the apartheid wall. They're responsible for the prisons, the checkpoint, and a lot of other technologies of oppression used against Palestinian people, right? J.P. Morgan and Chase became a certified criminal enterprise. I know you mentioned that when you were talking about their sex trafficking, right? They became a criminal enterprise after they pled guilty to felony charges for conspiring to manipulate the LIBOR, the, the foreign currency exchange rates, right? And now they're assisting G4S with illegal Israeli settlements on Palestinian land. Okay, can I take the first two that you had to help me on the back? Give my, give my last one. Okay. Last time, right? Okay. I'm gonna talk about. Okay, but can you wait? Let, let me let me do this. I'm going to answer every one of your questions tonight from the audience, but in fairness to the long lines, and we ask that you do one, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to answer your questions, so it's not good, but I'm going to ask you for number six, seven, eight, nine, and ten to see me in the back. So now, let me have the time to answer the questions as best I can. So let me say this. You want me to start at the end with J.P. Morgan Chase. I don't dispute anything that you said or with Les Wexton. But let me tell you a little bit about this congresswoman. J.P. Morgan Chase did some things that they paid for that I'm not proud of. When J.P. Morgan Chase deposited or wrote a, a letter, to a, a check to my campaign, you're absolutely right probably with that amount. I won't dispute that. But let me tell you what J.P. Morgan Chase did in this community. They gave me enough money to fund 
young girls to go to the Ohio State University and for me to do a program and allow those young ladies for one year, 24 of them, most of them from this inner city that had never been to Washington, D.C. Many folks in this audience came and volunteered to teach. We fed them, we housed them, and they supported me. Now, you might hear a lot about contributions and money, and I won't dispute any of it. But let me just tell you one thing. Don't you ever make an assumption for this time, this woman, if when I'm running, someone deposited money in my bank account that they got something for. That's wax. You are absolutely right. I think the figure might have been 10,000. I am the only Democrat that Les Wexner has ever given money to. But Les Wexner opened his house up to the key club for many folks in this audience who were African American and let them come to his house to support me. And he said, I support her because she comes with an unbiased answer to the issue. She stands on what's right for her constituents, whether they're black, Asian American, whether they're Jewish, whether they're from any part of this nation. And I will be unapologetic about anything that I have done with Les Wexler. He hires more of our LGBT community, he hires African Americans and some of the highest positions in retail in this community. And nor will I always be on the side you want me to be on. But one thing I can tell you, from my over 20 years in politics, I voted on some things you probably won't like. And I voted on some things that many of you will love. But the one thing you will never hear about this congresswoman, whether I took the money from a business, a labor, an organization that you like or don't like, it was not because they promised me something tangible. It was because there was something in the good of what they did was greater for my community. I also sent some money back, so when you check the record, there have been some things where people wouldn't hire people who are African American or LGBT, and I sent their money back. Or people who didn't pay women equal money for equal work. I had young students who came from my district from Bexley, and they presented their platform. Now, I'm not perfect. I didn't write a letter telling the students how to vote. I wrote my opinion. And I think it was OK for us to write an opinion on it. I didn't vote on the issue. I didn't call anyone and lobby them to vote for or against the issue. I simply said, because when you talk about economic development and growth, there are some companies that help with jobs, they help us with our economic growth, and they do a lot of wonderful things. So I'm not gonna dispute anything that you research and say, because I think we can look to each other in this audience, and I can find something I don't like about everybody in here. <laughs> Hopefully we can then find some good about what they're doing. I'm not perfect. I applaud you because we need more people like you to hold us accountable, but I don't ever want an insinuation because someone who has given more money, you know, I'm not gonna be mad at you if you worked harder. And to know Les Wexner's history, to know that he actually came from humble beginnings, to know that he worked hard and built a lot, yes, he has a lot of money. Is he perfect? No, but here's the other thing. I voted against some of Les Wexner's things. You know, so the, the thing of it is, if you're doing something right on the day that I take a vote or something I believe in, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna vote with you on every issue. And lastly, with J.P. Morgan Chase, I'm glad you brought that up. Because if they were talking to you now, they would say, check her record. She voted against us on a lot of the Dodd-Frank issues because they did do some things that were wrong. And they paid for it and they deserved it because they took risks that set us into a 2008 financial crisis and they should have paid every dime back they paid plus some. And I can say that about them because I said it's too good for sure.
Thank you, and I'll see you after you can answer, answer more of your questions. Let's go to the next question. Yes, ma'am. It's all right. It's all right. Um, we're being so supportive of both research funding at the NIH and the three hundred and fifty million increase that we saw in Alzheimer's research funding this past fiscal year, and also um, for co-sponsoring the Hofatch and for Kuchita for um, supporting. Uh, care planning at the time of diagnosis and also respite and palliative care for people living with Alzheimer's and other related dementias as well as other long-term diseases. So thank you. L let me just say this to you. No thank you to you. Let me say how proud I am that you are standing here. And I can tell you the organization that you're speaking about and advocating for they deserve every member of Congress to sign on to everything that they do. They lobby, let me just tell you, they don't just come to the office here in D.C. They came and filled my office in Washington, D.C. And if you would have heard one of the stories, you didn't need to hear the stories that they talked about, how this disease has affected so many of us. So I say thank you to you. Thank you. Thank you.